Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to give you around 50 shortcuts and key commands that you can use in Logic for a faster workflow. I'm currently doing this on Logic version 10.5.1. So if you look at your key commands, you can go up to Logic, key commands, and then you can edit your key commands. And you just have so many key commands in here. There's just an overwhelming amount that you can do and you can re-edit in here. So if you don't like any of the ones I'm about to show you, you can edit them in here. However, for me, I found that these 50 are the most valuable ones that I use quite often. Some of these I actually discovered while I was researching this video, but these are all just key commands that you can use with your mouse or your keyboard in order to just improve your workflow and be faster. So I've gotten these down into groups and I have these chapter marked out in YouTube so you can go to those specifically if you're interested in seeing those. But I will say you will not need all of these and you will not memorize all of these. So what I would do personally is I would just watch all of them and then write down the ones that you're like, oh, I could absolutely use that. And then make note of three of them. So say that you write down 25 of these, make note of three of them that you're going to use and always use all three of those key commands as you're mixing or recording next time. You'll find that having these key commands, you save a lot of time and it's just your workflow just moves a lot faster. Once you have those three down, add the next three because you'll find that you'll start developing a habit doing these shortcuts and you won't even really think about it anymore. Also, all of these are listed down in the description down below. So if you just wanted to copy and paste all of them, feel free to do that as well. But again, you're not going to memorize 50 new key commands just off the bat. So it's a little bit more helpful to apply these if you just learn three at a time and just build from there. So don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get started. So first of all, one of the things I recommend doing is you go to Logic Pro X, Preferences, General, go to Advanced, and make sure show advanced tools is selected. I don't have surround selected because I don't use surround sound, so you don't really need it. But I would have all of these on before you do this. Okay, so I'm gonna be going pretty quickly through these. So remember to write them down if it's something that you find helpful. Okay, so this first section is gonna deal with navigation, zooming, and just general moving around your session. So to zoom in and zoom out, normally you'd have to come up here, move these faders in order to zoom in and zoom out. This was one of the best ones I found just to improve my workflow. I just edit so much faster once I started using these. So first of all, you can hit command and then use the arrow keys. So command right zooms in, left zooms out, down will make the files bigger and up makes the files smaller. That does work. But for me, the best one is holding option and then using your mouse. So when I use I have the Apple magic mouse. So if I swipe right while holding option, it zooms in left zooms out, holding option and pressing down zooms like this, swiping up moves like this. It's just so much faster than trying to get it exact moving these right here. I find myself using that all the time. I definitely would recommend using that if you're not using it already. Key command Z will zoom in on the selection, whatever you have selected. So if I want to zoom in on all four of these, I push Z and it zooms in on just that and fills my entire screen. So a nice shortcut with that, let me zoom out, is doing Command A and then Z so you can see your whole session. So I use that one quite a bit. Most people know that space will start the session, but enter will move your playhead back to the beginning. So enter space, quick way to start from the beginning. Period and comma are ways to move the playhead around. So period moves it forward, comma moves it backwards by one measure. If you hold shift and do that, it moves in groups of eight measures. So very nice way to move around. All right, next group is all about opening windows and different menus. X opens your mixer. I use that constantly. A opens the automation. Again, I also use that constantly. Y opens the library, so it gives you a little bit more room. So I use that one a lot as well. These next ones I don't use as much, but they're still useful to know. G opens your global settings if you do any tempo changes or markers or time signatures. E opens your editor for either MIDI or audio. I is the inspector. I usually leave that open, but if you need more space, it's helpful. B opens your smart controls, which I never really use that often, but if you use them, that helps. D is your events manager over here. O opens your loops. F opens the files, and then N opens the score if you use the score. All right, so the next group deals with recording and playing audio. So most of you know hitting R will record. It'll start recording the audio. The button K turns on and off your metronome. You can see it turning on and off here. C activates the cycle mode, so you can see wherever you set your cycle if you want to turn it on or off. C is the quick way to do that. If you hit S, it'll solo a track. It's a very quick way to solo what you're listening to. M will also mute that track. You can see here, S to solo, M to mute the track. Space, you know, hits play. However, shift space 
will play whatever you have selected. So if I see the playheads right here, if I decide, let me zoom in actually so you can see this a little bit more. So the playheads right here, if I push play, it'll start from right there. But if I have this selected, shift space will start from whatever I have selected. Okay, now some tips on just arranging and editing. So editing your audio and MIDI. Command R will repeat something. Make an exact copy of it. H brings up hidden tracks. You can see the H show up right here. So if I wanted to, if I'm not going to use this anymore, I would mute it, H to hide it, get rid of it, and then push H again to bring it back out if I wanted to, so that I don't just delete it. Command Option N will load a new track. It's just a quick way to do that. Control X is one of my favorite ones that I use constantly. So let me actually zoom in here. So you see all this silence. So for this one, it doesn't really matter, but for like audio and drums and stuff like that, if you want to remove silence, Control X is a great way to do this. So hit Control X. That's a shortcut to bring up the silence. So you can see it's going to save this part. It's going to remove everything in here. You can change the threshold. So if I start moving it up, anything that doesn't hit the 18, negative 18 decibel threshold, like this right here, will also be deleted. So I'm going to get it right here so that everything is kept in here. Hit OK, and you'll see it disappear on this. And see, so now all the silence is deleted. L will loop a region. So see how it just looped out? And this one, it loops out until the end. Let me do this one. If I hit L here, it'll go until it hits, it finds another region to hit. So we know that M mutes the entire track, but what if I wanted to mute just a single region? Control M is the shortcut for that. See how it just mutes that region and not this one? Semicolon will move the region to the playhead position. So my playhead's right here. This is sitting right here. Semicolon moves it right to where the playhead's at. Okay, the button's Option and bracket will move the region till it touches the next region. So right now, option and then the closing bracket moves it to the next closest region. And then open bracket will move it, in this case, to the very beginning. Make sense? So if I move all this around, option closing bracket moves it there. Option open bracket moves it there. Make sense? All right, to nudge. So if you try to move something, you see how it moves based on where you have your snap mode set, which which is good. That's usually very helpful. I'm going to zoom in all the way here so that you can see this. This is a zoomed in as far as I can go. If you hold option and use the arrow keys, see how it's just barely moving? Let me kind of zoom in. I can zoom in a little further. See how it's just barely moving. I mean, if I zoom out, you're not even going to be able to see. I'm tapping that button, tapping it right now. Barely, barely moving. So that's nudging. So holding option and then left or right to barely nudge your region. The way you set that, right click, move, set nudge value to. Right now it's set to sample, which is so small. I mean, that's that's barely moving it. If I set it to say 30 second note, let me zoom out so you can see that a little bit. Option, and now it's moving by 30 second notes. So if I zoom out, you can see it's moving just a tiny bit, but nudging is pretty helpful. Command T will split the region at the playhead. So I'll split it right there. J will join the regions together. So say if I wanted these to all be one audio file, J, it'll ask, do you want to create? Hit create, and it's joined them together. I'm going to undo that really quick. Command J will join multiple regions together. So let's say I want all of these to be on one track. Command J, it'll ask you, do you want it mono or stereo? I'm just going to do stereo. And now all of those are in one session right here. And so just like the nudging, when you try to move, you have it moves to the beat or to the click or whatever. In order to move it very finely or exactly where you want, you click and then hold control and see how now you can move it freely to wherever you want it to. If you hold control and then click, it brings up like it was a right click. But if you click, hold the click and then push control, you can move that exactly where you want without having to worry about it snapping. A quick shortcut to do a fade, I use this quite a bit, is hold control shift and then drag on the side, right there, or start from right here. If you want the fade to go all the way to here, there you go. A way you can also do this is you can go to preferences, general, editing, fade tool click zones. If you enable that, let me get rid of this fade so you can see what I'm doing, is you can actually just draw in the fades yourself up here. So based on what, if you put it in the upper left or the upper right, you can draw in your own fades. So that two ways to do quick fades. All right, now with MIDI, so let's zoom out a little bit. You can also do use those zoom controls in other windows as well. Q, the shortcut Q will quantize it. Let me move these just slightly at a time. Push Q, 
and it quantizes it to wherever you want it to quantize. So I have this one set to 16th notes. Just an option, just letting you know, in your inspector right here, if you set the quantize here to whatever you want it to be, it'll automatically quantize as you record. It's an option if you want to do it. So holding option while moving, pushing the up or down arrows moves the MIDI regions up and down by a semitone. Holding option and shift will move it in octaves. See how the audio is moving in octaves. And then shift F. So if I've selected this one, if I push shift F, it'll select all the other tracks, all the other MIDI notes after that one. Nice and quick. All right, next deals with mouse clicks. So you have your main click and your command click up here. T will quickly bring up an option so you don't have to go up here. And then it tells you what all the shortcut is, shortcuts are for all of these. If I wanted to quickly bring up a race, you hit T and then E to a race, and then T and then T, and now I'm back to pointer. Just a quick little way to use your mouse clicks. This one again up here is your command click tool, just like it was in the MIDI region. So hit hold command, and now I can draw some mindset to pencil, or if I want it set to eraser, now I'm holding command and clicking, now it's eraser. So just a nice little easy way to get quick access to whatever you want your command click tool to be. Just a quick thing here, the marquee tool is a pretty useful one. You can actually turn that on under preferences, general, editing, marquee tool click zones. So this thing is actually really nice. So see on this, let me zoom in a little bit. I'll do it on this one. So see at the top here, I'm just on normal mouse and I can move this around or whatever. But when I go to the bottom half, it brings up the marquee tool. So if I double click, it splits the region. Can be helpful. Some people like it, some people don't. I leave that on. It's up to you how you want to use that. All right, I'm going to zoom all the way out. So almost done. Markers, if you're someone who uses markers, the quick shortcut to doing that is option and then apostrophe. So that'll create a marker. So I'm going to create a few markers. Option, apostrophe, and then option, apostrophe. Now if you use markers, it's really convenient because option and then comma or period will move the playhead to the next marker. So option, comma moves to the previous marker, option period moves to the next marker. And the thing that's cool about that is you can see the cycle is actually moving with that. So if you want to cycle, if you want to loop all of whatever is in marker two, that's a really quick way to do that. And remember C turns on and off the cycle pretty convenient. All right, last little group is about bouncing. So command B will bounce your entire session. So instead of going up here and file bounce, it's just a quick way to do that. Control B is a way to bounce in place. It'll bounce this region in place, which is nice. Control Command B will bounce an entire track in place. So say I want to bounce all of this Control Command B, and it'll bounce the entire track in place. So there you go. Those are about 50 editing tools. Hope you guys wrote down some of those. And again, remember to start applying three of them. You won't memorize just 50 new commands, and you probably won't need all of these commands. But the ones that work for you, plan to memorize three of them. Use that the next time it's in your session. Once that becomes a habit, then add another three. Once those become a habit, add another three, and it'll definitely help your work workflow. So I hope this helped you guys out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If I forgot any shortcuts that you use a lot, please leave them down in the comments. I'm always curious to see what you guys use for your editing and mixing and tracking. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Definitely helps out my channel a lot. Share it if you think that your friends can get use out of this. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.